In this video, we design program counter logic. Program counter keeps the pointer to the next instruction to run in the instruction memory. Every processor data path include a logic for maintaining program counter. Um, and here in this figure, we see this logic for our processor. PC is an 8-bit register. PC value is sent to uh, instruction memory. This is not shown in this figure. And we get the next instruction word from memory using this PC value. Initially, when processor starts a program, uh, reset control signal, the blue signal we see there, um, is set to one, to reset PC. This sets the value of PC to zero. And that's where first instruction of the program is found. Then reset signal is set to zero, and the rest of the logic maintains PC. PC SRC, the other control signal we see on the right, uh, defines what is the next value of PC. And next value of PC is indeed the next instruction. For example, if PC SRC is zero, new value of PC is equal to PC plus one in our processor, this means that a processor proceeds to the next immediate instruction in the memory. Otherwise, when PC SRC is one, new value of PC is equal to PC plus one plus least significant four bit of the instruction. Least significant four bit of the instruction is the immediate value and comes from a conditional branch instruction based on the instruction set that we have for this tiny processor. So when PCSRC is set to one, processor is running a branch instruction and jumps to the target of the branch. PCSRC is one only if instruction is branch and condition of branch is true, meaning jump must happen. For any other instruction, PCSRC is zero moving PC to immediate next instruction. Let's start designing our program counter logic. We need one 8-bit register, two 8-bit adders, and two 2 to 8 multiplexers. Fortunately, we have designed all these components previously, and we can reuse them uh, from the CPU project. Let's import the CPU project first. And let's import the standard library we use for uh, multiplexers. We have all the components we need. Let's wire them up. We have made connections based on the data path uh, given. Um, we need to assign immediate values for um, the uh, least significant format of the instruction and also immediate value one to add PC to one and keep incrementing PC using the adder up here. The immediate we have um, over here is the value that we need to set the PC to when reset pin is active. This should be equal to zero. The immediate value we have in here is the value added to PC 
for incrementing when there is no branch. That should be equal to one. The immediate value we have over here is the uh, immediate value coming from the instruction. Um, and we can set this value based on the test that we have next. Also, let's attach um, binary switches for the four pins we have in here. Let's start testing our circuit. And the way we should test our circuit is to, um, first of all, guarantee that our circuit works for both paths. First path being the path for incrementing the PCY1, and the second path being the path for um, incrementing the PC by the immediate value given from the instruction. So let's try and verify PC increment Y1 is working as expected. Let's uh, enable show values and start the simulation. We see value of X for um, PC. Um, we need to have a clock to start our simulation. So instead of the binary switch here, I attach a clock. And then I'll slow down the simulation so we can keep up with the changes. Let's just start the simulation by setting the enable bit of the register to one, meaning that we want to load the new value into the PC every cycle. And then let's set the multiplexer to um, zero. Uh, let's set the multiplexer reset uh, to one meaning that we initialize the value of PC by the immediate value we have down here. Um, now we see that if the reset is equal to one and the right enable of the register is equal to one, uh, we see the value of PC being equal to zero. And this can be also seen on the timing panel. The next thing we want to verify is to see when we disabled reset, we are still are able to see PC getting incremented. For um, this to happen, we need to make sure PC SRC is set to zero. So when it is zero, we are selecting the line zero of the uh, full adder. And then this new value will be stored in PC. Let's verify that. Uh, I'm going to uh, stop and start the simulation to make this caching value appearing here uh, disappear. Okay. Now we can set the reset to value zero. Uh, one problem we see in here uh, with the full adder when we are adding um, A and B, which are basically zero and one, the result is equal to zero three. That does not seem right. Let's go into the circuit and see what's wrong with the circuit. Seems again, some caching value is the problem. So let's uh, restart that. And start the simulation again. Okay, now we see zero from PC when reset is enabled, zero is the value of PC and the value of PC is added to one and the result is equal to one. The multiplexer up here is selecting line zero when we set PCSRC to zero. That selects zero one as the new value of the PC in the next cycle if I set reset to zero. So if I set the reset to zero, this line will be selected as the new value of the PC and this keeps incrementing as we go by every clock cycle. Let's uh, slow down the clock and see how this happens. Going to increment PC um, after setting the reset to zero. So if 
first clock cycle value of PC is equal to 0, 1. If we zoom in a bit, we can verify. And in the next clock cycle, the value of PC is 0, 2. Next clock cycle, 0, 3, 0, 4, 0, 5, 0, 6, so on and so forth. So our first test is successful and we are able to increment the value of the PC by sending the PC to the first adder and then setting the multiplexer control to zero, PCSRC equal to zero. So we can load PC plus one into PC in the next clock cycle. That's our first test. For the second test, uh, let's see if we can add some immediate value to the PC. For this purpose, let's set some non-zero number for um, the least significant for, but that comes from the instruction. For instance, let's set that to value zero four. If we add PC to zero four, we expect to get uh, PC plus four over this bus here. And if we set PC SRC to one, this line will be selected and that will be the new value of PC. The way that we can verify this is working is if we set the PC SRC to one, we should be able to see PC being incremented by five every time. One from the um, zero one here by this adder and four from this adder. So the path to the um, new PC going through this adder, this adder, this port of the multiplexer, this port of the multiplexer, and then getting into the uh, PC register. Let's verify that. I'm going to set PC SRC to one, and I would expect PC getting incremented by five every clock cycle. So that's what we see, 32 added by 5, 37. 37 in hex added by 5, 3C. 3C added by 5, 4, 1 in um, hex. That confirms our circuit is working as expected and we can increment the PC by 1, increment the PC by uh, instruction bits and increment and reset the PC to zero. Um, so let's stop the simulation and save this file as our circuit. Then we go for creating the symbol. Let's save this file as symbol. And then we remove um, some of the drivers. We want the reset to be a pin controlled by uh, the outside clock and PC SRC the same and PC uh, be the output. We also need to have least significant for bit of the instruction as a control going outside so we can get the immediate value. Um, so let's um, add these ports. It's all right if we keep the uh, initial value hard-coded as a PEX keyboard in the module. Same with this module and we can always uh, keep the enable switch of the register uh, set to one. So we have, we are going to have four inputs and one output. Let's attach the ports. Pick proper names for the ports. Let's 
symbol looks complete. Save this file and create a new device symbol. We have created a symbol. We can close all open circuits and open a new circuit to test this symbol. We test the circuit symbol in the same way that we tested the circuit. Let's start by testing that we can set PC to zero by activating the reset pin. I'm going to slow down the simulation. I would like to be able to see the clock too, so I click a name for clock and it will appear on the timing panel. I'll zoom in a bit so I can see the value of PC. If I set a reset to one, I expect the value of PC being equal to zero. Let's uh, label show value so we see the value of PC. So PC is now equal to zero. Let's try and see if uh, PC SRC is zero, meaning that the instruction is not branched uh, and uh, reset is uh, deasserted. We can get PC incremented by one every cycle. So as we can see up here, PC is incre being incremented by uh, one every clock cycle. I pick a different name for PC so it will show up on the uh, panel at the bottom. Okay, that confirms um, PC increment by one is working as expected. Now let's try and see if we can um, increment the PC by the immediate value. Let's attach hex keyboards. For instance, I like to increment the PC uh, by two. So I get uh, PC added by one automatically. I also set the immediate to one. So um, PC goes through two adders, gets incremented by one each time. And ultimately it will be incremented by two every clock cycle. Let's verify that. If I set the PC SRC to um, one, I would expect PC being incremented by two every clock cycle instead of one. So let's try that. So you see PC is being incremented by two now. So that suggests our circuit is uh, working, our symbol is working as uh, expected. And let's save this file as a test bench. And that's the end of the